the starter deck is the most important part of selling and expanding a TCG. Bad first experiences lead to no second experience. Despite this, companies release miss after miss. Let's see what they do wrong to learn how to do it right. Yu-Gi-Oh's two-player starter set includes everything you and a friend need to get started, except for the things it doesn't. Despite having scapegoat, there are no goat tokens. Additionally, we have decks focused on Xyz and Synchro Summons, or in other words, decks failing to demonstrate over half of the mechanics in the game. A simple turn involving Link Spider and Earth Golem at Ignister would go a long way, while a Pendulum Engine paired with Searching and Advanced Ritual Art could give normal monsters purpose. Topping it all off, the low power of the cards in the deck leads to a gameplay experience nothing like actual Yu-Gi-Oh. Players that pick up the product will leave unimpressed, confused, and unlikely to want more. And even if they do, there is no clear path forward. Pokemon's Battle Academy suffers from similar issues. The tutorial match has questionable plays, obvious even to new players, and non-scripted matches involve digging through 59 coughing babies, hoping to find the one bomb that solo sweeps the entire enemy lineup. Pokemon is a fun, diverse, skill-based game, but a curious newbie will quit before they realize it. Luckily, Pokemon does have a better product, the League Battle Deck. For $30, the Reshiram and Charizard GX box gives players a nearly fully built Tier 1 tournament deck. Other variants are rough around the edges, but are all quality products that win at local leagues with slight modifications. It is a bit pricier, but still comparable to other entertainment expenses like a movie or video game. The perfect starter product is cheap, represents the game well, is easy to modify, and hopefully comes with the means to do so. The gold standard is Digimon. The starter decks have meta-defining cards, combine with themselves to make competent lists, and even include a booster pack, all at a price point lower than the competition. The product sold like wildfire, and shops could not keep up. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Battle Dome, whose introductory experience is baffling enough to inspire this video. Getting you and a friend started is going to run $50 after shipping, which you need to pay because very few card shops have it and it isn't available at chain stores. For this price point, you get a collection of the worst cards the game has to offer, including several with a 50% chance of doing literally nothing in a one card per turn rule set. Modifying the decks is a huge struggle, as the site does not sell individual booster packs. Even if you do find some, you aren't able to use your rare chase cards if they don't match each other. There is more I could say, but I don't want to turn this video into dumping on Neopets, so let's finish off with my own card game. I made a design choice very early on to make decks 30 cards with a 2 copy limit. This is intentionally half of both Pokemon and Magic, allowing every starter product to contain 2 decks, a necessity that most products seem to forget. Booster packs should supplement starter products, not dwarf them. If starter decks aren't fun, packs don't sell. If starter decks aren't competitive, packs don't help. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you are interested in more TCG discussion, check out the playlist shown on screen. If you want to see my design thoughts put into action, join my Discord server. In addition to the custom TCG I'm making, there is an entire rebalance of the base fossil Pokemon format, ROM hacks, and other original board game projects in the works. Say hi and send me a message about what you're most interested in.